Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RGTV. My name is Franklin Katunda. We're here at the Biso Production Studio in U.S. Texas. All right, so here in the studio, I have a young man coming from Austin, Texas. His name is Mantos Oseni. He is uh, a man of media, not only that, because he went to school, government studies, and with a minor in media and filming and all that stuff, he went for internship for bigger outlets out here in America. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, uh, <laughs> show. The first question I have for you. you. Oh, by the way, let me say, welcome to Dallas. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Yeah. How, how was it coming from Austin, Texas? Beautiful. Um, I mean, I was trying not to sleep on the road, though. Because ah, <laughs> yes. it was very early in the morning. I left like at 6. And I got six here like 6 a.m. Yes. Uh -huh. And then I got here like 9.30 ah. a.m. So it wasn't too bad. It was just really long. I don't like driving. So yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree. All right, so, uh, but thank you for coming in. I mean, it's uh, a pleasure to have you in this studio. Um, our, you know, we always have that drive is to go out there and, first of all, not only we are communicating, but also mm -hmm. forecast what we do and what we can do for our people. Mm -hmm. Because we have so many of them out there that like entertainment. They look at the news, but not really the news, but the mm -hmm. entertainment. Yeah. First question I have for you, uh, we are looking at the youth and we try to make sure that there's a positive use of social media. Mm. How do you think we can use the social media positively? I, first of all, I would say start off with questions that you have. Mm -hmm. What is, what are some issues that you, personally, that's mm -hmm. how I start. Yeah. I, I love to ask questions. So I want to, first of all, think within mm -hmm. and ask myself like, hey, yeah. what are some things I'm unclear about and I want to get other people's opinion on? Yeah. Or what are some things that I see um, problems in in society mm -hmm. that I want to highlight and ask on other people's information? Yeah. And I feel like that's a positive use because I am presenting information in a way that other people might not have thought of, you mm -hmm. know, like right off the bat, they wouldn't have been like, oh, actually, you know, this is actually a legit problem mm -hmm. and, or something that I just thought about the other day. I want to hear what other people think on it. I think that's one way. Mm -hmm. Second way is, of course, um, as I said, that's information. Second way, of course, is creativity. Yeah. We're all creatives in some way, mm -hmm. some fashion, some form. Um, utilize that. Hop on it. Mm -hmm. Social media is hungry mm -hmm. for creators. Just create something. Let the world see what you have to offer. Because, I mean... We all have nine to fives, but I'm telling you, there's something you're uniquely created for. Mm -hmm. And social media is actually a good way to amplify that and to let the world see that thing that you're made for. Now, how do you do uh, uh, social media by uh, using at the same time the media? Your yeah. media is right there. It's got rules. You went to school for it, of yeah. course. <laughs> he uh, went to school for... Uh, media but not only that interning uh he did internship with uh, mm -hmm. three uh, major what was those places again you went to yes television? so um the the um i first of all started with kxan uh -huh. in austin texas yep. local tv show for mm -hmm. the lifestyle show studio 512 mm -hmm. amazing beautiful experience yeah. and then three months after i went to new york yeah i interned with uh, the daily show um trevor noah yeah and um at the same time, I interned with NBC, specifically the show New York Live, which is the local lifestyle show. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I was doing those. Those were the three um, specific TV shows that I, I interned in during my uh, college yeah. years. Now, when, so back to my question, I was going to yeah. ask, how do you now take all the knowledge you got from those uh, places, those TV mm -hmm. uh, uh, outlets, and use that uh, combining it with your creativity, like you mm, said, mm, but mm. have it available on social media. You see, it's interesting you ask that because while I was interning at The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, mm -hmm. I was mainly focused on what I was doing there. Yeah. But after months, like months after, mm -hmm. after I come back to Texas, yeah. I just found myself adopting some of their fashion, you know, how they would yeah. um, present their show to mm -hmm. And how they would use the news specifically, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I find myself 
Yeah. Watching the news, listening to the news, <laughs> reading. Oh, okay. Here just you go. so I I don't Checking run out sources. of yeah yeah yeah. Uh -huh. Just so I don't run out of things to say. And just because I want to ask you what you think about this. Like if I just saw on the news yesterday that this happened in Austin, Texas, yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna ask you like, hey, this is home and this happened. <laughs> what are your thoughts? That's something Trevor Noah would do. Well, you, you you know the correspondents who go out in the streets and talk about it. Yeah. And I just found myself asking more relatable um, current affairs questions. And um, that's how I was able to rope that in to my content. I see. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And then with, even with the lifestyle shows that I was doing, mm -hmm. um, I I find myself also going to so, uh, social events yeah. in Austin, like here that TV stations might not know about yeah. or radio stations might not know about. It's just a small community thing. And I just go. Yeah. Because I want to talk. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to. And those are the things that lifestyle shows will cover. Like mm -hmm. if it's a barbecue outside. Yeah. Uh, where you know Zilker Park, for example. That's exactly where you're yeah. gonna find people. You can ask questions. Yeah. If you have your theme, you get up there, and you know what? They're available for a microphone, right? Yeah. And you get to get the resources and and things that you need uh, yeah. as, for your content. Yeah, yeah, of course. So they taught me how to scout those events out, uh -huh. and I have applied that in my own channel, and I go out to events and ask questions based on what's happening Let there. me tell you, it's a great job you're doing. I yeah. I've been watching some of your videos where you get people interested in, a, you know, common subjects, things that, mm -hmm. are, you know, pertains to life and uh, how people perceive things yeah. in life. And, mm -hmm. and, and so in a very simple way, you get them to talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, yeah. you, you're persistent, but at the same time respectful, at the same time funny, and you get them to say things that are really like, wow. I didn't even know people think like that. And and, and and the other thing I was gonna say is just that particularity of letting people that freedom of speech. Yes, that's a uh, big thing for me. That's a very big thing. <laughs> it's like I don't I really don't want you to feel like I want you to respond a certain way. I yeah, want yeah. you to tell me how you think. You have to be you. Because, yeah, be yeah. you. Genuine, because genuine. there's someone else on the other side. Yeah that agrees with you uh -huh. and there are other people who don't agree but this is how we can all communicate and move forward as a society when we know this exists yeah and then if it's a problem we can resolve that yeah yeah i see ladies and gentlemen watch that short clip of uh, this gentleman on the set of trevor noah at the nbc uh, studio in new york that is a funny one <laughs> everybody welcome to the daily show i am matthew the singing and we have an exciting show for you tonight so let's get to it <sighs> all right people believe me when i say i tried i tried so hard to fit all of the news we have for you tonight in a little little small container that i have here with me but it just wouldn't work i tried using a shirt gun too but it wouldn't work it wouldn't fit <sighs> man but the good news is this is just enough time for a segment i call ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> Yeah, I told you, it was going to be a funny one, so we're back in the studio. I saw you doing uh, the reading on the teleprompter. Tell, yes. tell us a little bit of the experience so, uh, it is about, because, you know, you at the same time want to be genuine. You want to speak from your heart, mm -hmm. but you got to read the teleprompter. How mm -hmm. do you combine both? So that read you saw, that was, I think the, that the cold was. cold read? Yeah, that read, yeah, it was uh -huh. a cold read. Uh -huh. uh, and that was like, I think that's the second time I've ever done a cold read uh -huh. um, before using the TV station's um, teleprompter. Uh -huh. And um, for me, it was it, it was a good pacing. Uh -huh. The guy controlling it wasn't too fast. It wasn't too slow. <laughs> it was a good pacing. Uh -huh. Or it's just, I felt like I needed to go a lot faster. Like, I, uh -huh. I, I couldn't, for some reason... I thought you were faster, though, speaking. It was kind of fast, too, right? Oh, for, um, see, yeah. I just felt like I wasn't mm. as... Relax as I would be. As, oh, I see. Yeah, as, yeah. As, as, so you can speak as if from I your was heart. talking. Yeah, yes. uh -huh. yeah. Okay. I just felt like I wasn't as relaxed. Relaxed, but um, it was it was definitely good. It was an experience. And then afterwards, mm -hmm. I felt I was like almost beating myself up. I was like, <laughs> man, nobody's gonna hire me <laughs> if I can't do this really well. How am I gonna get it's hired? It's a tough one. Yeah. it's a tough one, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to see that short clip. It's just. A journalist standing in front of a teleprompter. Of course, he's an intern. He was an intern while he was doing this in New York at the NBC uh, studio. Um, it's, it's it's a type of job that you learn. You learn to not only have your creativity out, 
you know, your own mm -hmm. skills, but also you have to read mm. the script because that's how you build uh, your, your content to the audience. Rocky at a time. And here's going head, and he's going head to head with no less than Rocky himself in the new hit series, Tulsa King. We're talking, working with Sly, breaking your record. Yep, so we got that. And so ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the studio. I'm gonna ask uh, the second question to my guests. Yeah. Uh, it's about the knowledge I'm now. Ready for it. <laughs> when we bring knowledge to people via mm -hmm. uh, media, yeah. Um, first of all, what do you do? What is your homework before you bring any type of knowledge, uh, either through news or mm. just regular talk? Mm. Mm. Well, I'll give you this example because it just happened. Mm. Um, yesterday, I was at the hospital with a very, very um, good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, she was going through it with her insurance uh -huh. company. And um, it came to mind, I was like, this healthcare system in America, like, yeah. it's very different. Like, yeah. it's, some people would rather, let's say, die, yeah. than have the ambulance come, come pick and them get up. Them. Yeah, because yeah. it's opposite, just so expensive. Opposite of Europe, opposite of yeah. Canada. So I'm like, and, and when, I, when she was making that, I didn't tell her, yeah. but when she was making that call, that's how that dropped into my spirit. I was like, this is a good one. Go yeah. out and ask me what they think about their country's healthcare system. Yeah. Cause it's not, it's one of the things that scares me to be honest. When I think about my future, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm gonna bring my kids into, I'm like, man, like yeah. we need better healthcare. Like better people healthcare. cannot yeah. be saying I'm better off dying or suffering yeah. than using immediate, you know, resources. So that's the knowledge right there. Now, how many people, regular guys like you and me, know about the preventive care? Because that's the problem, right, in the American system. Preventive care is missing, and most time people have to go, you know, on the ambulance because they're gonna yeah. take them to the ER. Yeah, it is. It, it it's a it's a big thing. It's a. I think I think awareness is not enough. Yeah. There needs to be more. Um, I think one of the things, though, that drives people away is just the expense. It's just really expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some people that once they hear the price, they're just like, is it, am I, is it going to send me to my deathbed? <laughs> no, I'm fine. Yeah, I don't need it. Is it going to put me on a ventilator? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But to answer your question, so yeah. I, I get to know my questions through personal experiences, yeah. watching the news listening to the news as well, be it podcast, mm -hmm. radio, whatever it is, um, and just reading yeah. people around me. That's, yeah. I'm just always attentive and scouting and looking for content. Now, how do you get the, because here's the thing though, a lot of people have that kind of, if I can call it phobia, mm -hmm. sitting there and listening to news because it's boring. How do you transmit that news content to the audience by making it like kind of fun? How do you do that? Because look at me, I'm, I have glasses, <laughs> and I'm making it too serious here. I, honestly, I think that's just my personality when I think about it. I think it's just who I am. Yeah. I just have the ability to make something that is really serious, less serious. Although it, we understand that it's serious, but mm -hmm. when I'm having that conversation with you, you are you feel a lot more relaxed to the extent that you can just let it out and be able to speak your mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I don't know to mm -hmm. answer your question, yeah. but I just try to be really respectful. Mm -hmm. And as I always, and the, the theme for my, my channel is um, less of me, more of you. More of so you, yes. I always carry that out wherever I'm shooting, whoever I'm talking to, mm -hmm. giving off that vibe and communicating to them like, hey, it's more of you, less of me. Yeah. And if you don't feel comfortable talking, it's okay, we can cut it. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> I just make them feel welcome, relaxed, and yeah. just be myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how do we save? How do we save uh, today's press, uh, the real media that we have out there? I mean, the structure media. Mm -hmm. How do we save that from fake news? That's a very interesting question. Well, it um, depends, right? <laughs> how do we save it from fake news? Yeah. And what do you view as a fake news, by the way? What do I view as fake news? I think fake news is information that is inaccurate. Basically, in other way, <laughs> in other words, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> inaccurate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're. It's all right to say the car left the parking lot, mm -hmm. but when you say the car stayed on the parking lot, 
that's that's a lie that's fake you yeah. know uh -huh. so basically that i think i think that is just differentiating what happened and what didn't happen yeah. so that is just to give you an explanation that is my definition of fake, fake news. yeah so i'm saying something that never happened but you're just is that because the person didn't check the sources or is that because he checked the sources but he ignored it and he gave his own opinion about um, that news that particular news he just it could be it could mm -hmm. go both ways it could be that you see mm -hmm. this but you know that if i said this mm -hmm. to my audience it's not going to serve me it's not going to serve how i want my audience to look at this issue mm -hmm. so you would want to flip it around to yeah. favor you and your agenda or what you want to throw out to people now according to what you went to school for mm -hmm. that's not right correct yes it's not something to do I because mean, you, bias, yeah. you have you have bias right yeah, there yeah. now because normally in the media you're supposed to be uh, impartial mm -hmm. and try to look at things on both sides and give an a, a, a neutral account mm -hmm. of what took place now a lot of people do that but sometimes they change based on uh some of the opinion that news outlet has or the alignment i don't know political alignment mm -hmm or business interests and that's when it becomes very hard now if we have uh, i hate to name some of them but if i said it, if we have abc or cnn here mm -hmm. versus um uh, a small you know news outlet like uh, the young turks uh, mm -hmm. or um john stewart doing his own show out there when you compare the two uh, would you say one of the one of the two is fake news or would you say fake news is on both sides sometimes so for me and just because of how much i'm informed mm -hmm. about the media space and all mm -hmm. i go in those shows watching knowing that mm -hmm. this is how this is structured this is probably what they're trying to do this is their goal mm -hmm. and all of that like the Daily Show, I already know, like, it's mainstream news. Yeah. They're presenting, and it's basically comedy. Oh, I wanted to, I meant to say, <laughs> during when I, when we get that little video, it was actually not NBC. It was actually the Daily Show. Yeah, uh, the Daily Show Trevor studio. Noah. Yeah. I wanted to correct that. <laughs> That's one of the things about the media. You have <laughs> to come back and make a correction yeah. where there was a mistake. Yeah. Okay, so I hate to name them, but if I say M ABC or mm -hmm. CNN, mm -hmm. They might have bias, right? And then versus somebody like uh, uh, this guy, some of the com comedian out there, they do their own show and they have it on YouTube. Um, they have their bias on both sides, yeah. but uh, today we don't really know. I'm try I guess what I'm trying to find out is where's the fake news? Is it on the regular outlets, the ones that we know? Or is it on the yeah. little guys trying to yeah. make his own show on the side? I feel like in the world we live in today, people don't see news mm. as fake. They just see it as their own truth. Oh, and their own truth. Yeah. Very important. And, yeah, their own truth. Mm -hmm. Not just news, anything in general, just the society we, we live in. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very different. The truth, mm. your truth. So I think they've already roped that into the media as well, mm -hmm. where this channel tells you what they believe. This okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Believe. So you're telling me, CNN or the other, uh, I mean, the big outlets. I'm not saying have, that. Well, let, let, let me, okay, let me take the names <laughs> off. Let me just say the big outlets, the official ones that we know, they have their own truth. And so sometimes also the other guys on the side, uh, when they do their own uh, um, comedy or when they do their uh, t uh, talk shows, mm -hmm. they have also their own truth. That is, I feel, yes, what I'm saying is yeah. that is a possibility, a very, very high possibility. Yeah. I'm not saying any yeah. of them have, but it is a high possibility. And that is why I approach all of those streams, mm -hmm. those channels, knowing that this is, I'm taking it as a grain of salt, basically. Um, because I always go back, do my own homework, look at it from my perspective. At the end of the day, I walk away with what I see and what I interpret, basically, mm -hmm. my own truth. So it, it sounds like that is what everybody's doing because you don't even know who to trust yeah. anymore. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And it's sad, but I, it's just the truth. That's our society. That, that's that's life. That's what the society. How about on a subject where, uh -huh. okay, let's say a big outlet out there reported on something, mm -hmm. and so I captured that 
and then I'll go ahead and, and, and maybe check also what the other folks are saying on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, on Twitter, because yeah. a lot of information on Twitter. And uh, then I'll go ahead and just kind of double check that and try to do some research on Google on this and that and check the press, yeah. uh, check the press, press releases mm -hmm. and, and go out there and read the newspapers about the same subject and try now to compare. And I know the problem is that because people don't have the luxury mm -hmm. to put all those elements together mm -hmm. just to find out if one subject was true or not. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think that's where we're having issues. Yeah. And the, <clears throat> today's youth is facing that issue. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why, one, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. one thing I do is I always do my own homework. Yeah. If I'm working at a news station, for example, and they want me to report this issue, mm -hmm. and I already know the company I work with, I know their style, I know their fashion, mm -hmm. of, of course, it's my job. Yeah, yeah. So I have to do that. But personally, like I could do my own homework and... Yeah you know, see for myself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow, that's, uh, do you like the job? Well, let's say the internship you YouTube? went through, how, oh, how yeah. did you like it? Oh yeah, it was beautiful, it was eye-opening. It wasn't I, boring, right? No. It so it's more friendly, people, they yeah. get, you get to meet a lot of people, Yeah, people. a lot of celebrities, a lot of professionals. Uh -huh. I got to get advice from, I mean, they were, they were amazing. It's, it, it was uh, outstanding, the, the six, Four, six months I was there yeah. in New York. I, I loved it. It was eye-opening. Six eye months, that's a lot. Let me ask you, as an intern, when you work with people like that, of course, do they intimidate you? Do you feel, like, intimidated? No. I, I didn't feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. I just felt like we're going to see again. Uh -huh. That's how I felt. I just felt like we're going to see again, and this time... It will be me interviewing you. you. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna meet again. Like I was like, yeah, you're gonna come on my show. We're gonna talk. Yeah. We're gonna. Let me tell you something interesting. Yeah. Last year or two years ago, I DM'd, sent a direct message to Kevin Hart saying, yeah. "Hey, Kevin Hart, I oh, love Kevin. you. All right. I follow you. You mm. inspire me. And just know that when you read this, I'm gonna be standing right beside you because you just finished interviewing on my show." And then we're gonna go out for lunch. Basically, I'm good. future me is gonna tell you read your DMs from me. Uh -huh. What I sent you a couple years ago, and then yeah. So yeah, that's how I feel about everybody that I meet. That's we're gonna great. see again. Yeah. Yeah. And so yourself sitting on that Daily Show uh, uh, desk, uh, mm -hmm. the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. A man that I like so much because he does uh, not only comedy, mm. but it's an intelligent comedy. He's a smart person trying really to communicate uh, mm. greatness and knowledge mm. through comedy. Uh, when you sat on that chair and uh, even when you worked in that environment, yeah. what did you see yourself? What did you see yourself doing on his footsteps? I saw, first of all, kudos to that man because he puts a lot on his shoulders. Cause, yeah. You know, like the news is very sensitive, yeah. especially when you're making jokes about it. Some people take it really personal uh -huh. and they might want to attack you. People, we've even had people in the audience come out and try to challenge oh. him, you know, uh -huh. on his views. And then he is very eloquent with how he defends what he says. He yeah. never takes it back and kudos to him. Yeah. Um, but when I was sitting on that, seat though i i felt i felt that power i i've of course nobody was in the audience it was just me yeah yeah uh, but, but you felt like you I were felt like you I were prophesying to yourself yes exactly the words <laughs> i used to I, I i was i was um i was in the studio and i was like you know what before i leave let me just prophesy into my future real quick yeah. so i did his old entry practicing impersonating him but of course with more of my personality and i was like i can do this i can definitely do this and i know i will all right well here's the last question what's your dream on the media what is what, what do you dream to see on the media today and tomorrow i uh, having mm -hmm. you know talked about uh, the good side of it yeah. the bad side and how what needs to be improved and everything yeah. what is your 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 dream how do you see the media becoming my dream for the media honestly um and i would say for my media mm -hmm. um is to create a space where everybody can freely express yeah. their opinions, how they feel, what they think, mm -hmm. you know. Even if they think it might not be welcomed, it might be welcomed, we wanna hear. Because hmm. that's the only way we can address anything.
because I feel like that's something we are lacking in today's society. It's almost like when you go into a specific place, mm -hmm. you just have to wear that collar. Mm -hmm. You know, you, even if you might have a different belief, you don't want them to know that because mm -hmm. then all things are going to go south. But so, I want I want a future where we can all, mm. even though some people say some very wrong things, yeah. we're not going to throw spares at them, but yeah. we're going to communicate with them and get help and in ways that you know they can see things differently okay. and maybe if what they said is harmful mm -hmm. we can help them see how that is harmful without throwing spears at them i see what you're saying now not really something scripted you want mm -hmm. something uh you know yeah that like works an out open of your freedom yeah. freedom yeah. of speech yeah but do you take time to go back and fix some of the stuff that they say that maybe not accurate at all? Or do you do it on the spot as you are talking to them? Because sometimes you did that. I saw you yeah. throwing some uh, some yeah. of the the jokes, but you kind of, uh, you know, yeah. you know, kind of uh, double check what the person said and say, oh, that's not actually accurate. <laughs> and you kind of put it, there. is that safe to say, to, to do yeah, it that way? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to, so this is something I became aware of recently mm -hmm. um, where I hear something that they say because it's less of me mm -hmm. more of you, more I, of you. in yeah. the past i was trying to just keep quiet mm -hmm. and tell them after the shoot but i'm like no it's doing them injustice just tell them right there yeah so somebody because said, it's good also for, not only for them but also uh, for the, the audience yeah. yeah you want the viewers so, yeah so, to get the right information yeah yeah so somebody said something that was completely incorrect i was like oh no like yeah. the reason why you see that happening is because these guys went through a b and c mm -hmm. however if you do e f g mm -hmm. you're not going to go through that I see, I see. But you have to, I'm always respectful about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you are the anchor. At the end of the day, you can always conclude by mm -hmm. saying, making your own closing okay. remarks yeah, yeah. where you're going to fix some of the mistakes that yeah. we said uh, during the... Uh, but um, let's speak about uh, uh, the youth. Um, and in conclusion, the mm -hmm. youth today, um, they're a little bit lost because whatever they get in front of them, that's what they consume. Yeah. Uh, what would you advise them to do in order to just uh, use the media positively and not look at it the way we, s we see it today? I would say use it positively, as I said the first in the beginning, mm -hmm. create, show the world what you have. If you're someone who wants to be in front of the camera, yeah. don't wait for a studio or a TV station to find you. Yeah you keep doing you and keep posting it out. I mean, that's how exactly. you found me. Yeah, that's so, how I found you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so be creative. Just yeah. keep pumping out content. Keep doing yeah. stuff and show your best work. Just keep going, no matter if you get one view, two views, whatever it is, just keep going. Yeah. And then another thing is try as much as possible to stay informed mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. You know, we've talked about it a lot about, you know, incorrect information, correct yeah. information. Yeah. I think it's also helpful to be educated in everything yes hear everything well journalists has yeah. to be open-minded yeah be open-minded accept yeah. everything yeah don't throw stones at anybody now mm -hmm. if you if you know <laughs> something is obvious <laughs> yeah you can call it out when you hear but like uh -huh. just be informed and um another thing i would say is use the media to show kindness to somebody in some way yeah. put a smile on their face yeah let them feel welcomed because yeah. Believe me, whoever is watching your video, a lot of people who are watching your video, mm -hmm. they probably don't get to talk to anybody a day. Yeah. Uh, for that day, your content might be the only thing they see, uh, other yeah. people's content. That, yeah. They might not see a physical human being to connect with. So you don't want to be showing them negativity as the, mm -hmm. you know, the only thing they they get to, you know, relate with. I see. I so see. just spread love. Put a smile on their Spread face. love, spread joy. Uh, and all that, yeah. Well, to conclude, uh, you are a man of faith, correct? Yes. And I know it, it always doesn't show when you yeah. do your shows. <laughs> and uh, are you a Christian? Yes, Muslim? I am a Christian. And you were, uh, your parents were originally from? Uh, Nigeria. 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 Yes, Nigeria. Wow. So, Nigeria boy. <laughs> oh, Nigeria boy, yes. Yeah. So how do you, what is your message to all the young folks Africans and African Americans mm. in the diaspora here, people who look like you, people who want to just, you know, try for something bigger, but they look at media as entertainment mm. versus a source of knowledge. Yeah. What would you tell them? 
You I'll got tell all them, these Nigerian folks and you know they love media. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, first thing I'll start off with saying this, you know how they say the world is your oyster. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'll say the media is your oyster as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it on with the media, it can reach anywhere, anybody, yes. anytime. Um if you have a message that's deep in your heart, communicate that do know though as you're using that free speech there will be consequences to that if you say something yeah. that is derogatory or you know goes outside of the line mm -hmm. but that is not what i'm encouraging i'm encouraging positivity, positivity so if yeah. you have something that's weighing on your heart that you want to share to people that you want to say mm. do that yeah. use social media think start to think about aside from the dances the challenges yeah. the pranks yeah think about how you can brighten other people's days. Think about how you can send a message to the people around you. I think that's very, because that was one of the things mm. I thought about when, the early days when I first started. Yeah. It was all about laughs and giggles, like yeah. about riddles was what I was doing. Uh -huh. If a car is red, but it goes blue, what's yeah. the color tomorrow? You know, yeah. stuff like that. Uh -huh. But I, I was like, I want something more in depth. I wanna, I wanna provide value, that's yeah. the word I need. Provide value uh -huh. to whoever's watching your video, That's is right. what I'll say. And um, seek out those yeah. giving out value yes. with the yes. media because those things will often inspire you, there you and go. will help you find yourself. Great, great, mm -hmm. great. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, um, I see you sometimes doing, uh, well, maybe twice, I see you doing MC, which I do yes. as well. <laughs> so when you're a person from the media, people will actually yeah. solicit you for big events mm. or even family events yeah. like weddings. And so how, how do you see yourself when you do that? How do you feel? The first person that gave me my work <laughs> as an MC mm -hmm. is my family, my oh. sister, my mom. Yeah, yeah it was from my sister's um um, engagement. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was it was beautiful, and I was I had Kofi, of course, <laughs> oh, but I I braced it. I was like, I can do this. I can do this. Uh -huh. But um, that was the first one, and then the ones you saw, yeah, um, were for the Afro Beats Live. Yeah, the Afro show Beat Live in at Austin, ATX. Austin, Texas. Shout out to Tarilla mm -hmm. for putting me on for that. Yeah, um, yeah, it was it was definitely eye-opening and you, you know I don't know if you were trying to get taller you know six <laughs> foot or something yes, that, that was oh, a joke. <laughs> no I was I, so I was just performing as a joke you know to make the people laugh and yeah. they enjoyed it somebody actually told me after that that mm. hey I saw you up there and the only thing I could think about was just Jamie Foxx <laughs> like you reminded me of Jamie Foxx oh like, really I, th I thought that was a compliment I was like thank you so much I appreciate that <laughs> and I'm like I can actually do this because I, at first I thought that was outside my line yeah. you know I'm not trying to do that mm. I don't think I'll be good but now it's like yeah, I accept it. Like it's so much confidence. I've been confidence. doing MC for yeah. twenty years now. It's twenty helping, years. Yeah. I mean, people just—they always find me, even if I hide. They're <laughs> gonna come and get me because they want me to be there on the microphone and yeah. try to uh, entertain. But not only entertain, but also educate. Because yeah. every time I get a chance to say mm -hmm. something, be it a wedding or a, an anniversary, anything, I yeah. can say. I will say something positive, <laughs> something you know that yeah. will transmit knowledge and love and. You know, all kind of emotions that we have as a society, but, you know, you just need a mouthpiece mm -hmm. to uh, put it out Yeah. There. <laughs> but that's good. Well, that prepares us uh, for the future. We will mm. see you, God knows, um, for the next show here in Dallas, yeah. elsewhere, whatever place you're going to go. I know you are a I'm man of I'm going to bring you on my late night show. Oh, yeah, the yeah. late night show. Yeah, I'm that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I know we're going to get to the level where you will be big out there and people will yeah. discover you. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing is we met and we had a chance over the phone mm -hmm. to do some type of mentoring. And yeah. he asked me a, few, a lot of questions that I answered totally. And, and I was so proud that from that encounter, uh, the telephone call, you went into your internship and mm -hmm. and got everything done and once in a while we used to you know get together talk and and, and kind of uh, do the follow-up on where you are and what you're doing in, yeah in Austin in New York and that's a good thing and yeah. see I believe that's what the folks from the media need to be doing helping mm -hmm. each other be uh, there to share the, mm -hmm. the, the experiences so 
going forward you will do the same thing i guess oh yeah absolutely i welcome people with open arms please mm -hmm. asking questions because i'm pretty much in the same boat with you yeah and even when i leave that boat like i'm up there doing my thing mm -hmm. i will still want other people to come you know and do the same thing with me and even go much higher than i am there you yeah. go Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, being here with us at the Biso Production Studio. Uh, my name is Franklin Katunda. We're here on uh, Think About It. That's the show that you've been watching. Please like our video on YouTube, and we are also on TikTok. We are on, uh, <laughs> on IG. I was actually uh, privileged to have uh, a man uh, from the media. He is from uh, Austin, Texas where he lived and where he went to school. Now he's visiting us here in Dallas in our studio. Thank you so much uh, for Thank you so much showing for up. Me. And I know we'll have a chance to have you again in this oh, studio yeah. speak about other things Absolutely. that are more uh, fun and comedy and things like that. Yeah, for sure. All right. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much, ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. and we'll see you next time.